Okay, so let's do this. I apologize that this is a bit late. Um, busy weekend. So this is episode 5 of Legend of Korra, uh, Peacemakers. Korra's a terrible avatar. I feel... I don't like saying that. I, I don't want to say that, but it's true. Uh, I thought we were improving. She started to... She reconciled with her parents. She'd figured out that Tarlock was a jerk. Um... And it all goes downhill this episode. Oh my... All right. Okay. So, this episode feels a little bit more schizophrenic than the last ones. So, there's now... There, there's now a rebellion going on in the South that Kor's dad is leading. <clears throat> she goes back to Republic City. We're, we're back in Republic City uh, with Lin Beifong uh, and the new president of Republic City. I forget his name. Uh, I don't know how important that will be. Uh, and she's trying to get Republic City forces to join with the South. Um, Varys, the, the business guy, Varys goes with her. Asami, Mako, and Bolin go with her. Mako goes back to being a detective. Bolin and Varys hang out, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, and aside from that, the only thing we see is we get a brief bit of Unalak telling his children... Um, uh, Eska, and I forget the son's name, we get a brief bit of Unalak telling his children to go bring the Avatar back. Alive. There's a really creepy scene where, <laughs> of course, Eska's still, like, outraged that Bolin left her. So, uh, her, her dad's like, I need the Avatar, and she's like, I'll find her. And he goes, alive. And Eska's just like, oh, fine. Um... Interesting that he would have to help tell his daughter to not kill someone. And, and interesting. Uh, still no real development with the twins. They're just sort of there occasionally. Uh, okay, so a lot of stuff happens in Republic City. Bolin is hanging out with Varys. Varys seems to take a liking to him. Uh, and Varys decides, I'll make a movie. Um, Var Varys is stealing this whole season. He's the highlight of the whole season thus far. He decides to make a movie, obviously, you know, parodying propaganda films, <clears throat> depicting tragedies or atrocities committed by the Northern Water Tribe, starring Bolin. So he and Bolin seem to be taking a liking. Uh, Asami decides, he, he convinces Asami to sell the leftover mecha tanks and all the weapons from season one to the Southern Tribe forces so that they can fight back. Um... That's all that that goes. They both plan what to do, but there's no, like, real movement. We don't see Asami sell anything. Asami's still not doing anything this season. Um, and they talk about doing the movie, and we see them, like, start it. Um, okay, so when they're there, Korra immediately, immediately starts messing things up. As the Avatar, she's supposed to remain neutral. Her dad told her, like, look, you need to remain neutral in this. You can't openly side with us. And what does she do? She shows up and she's like, oh, there's a Southern Water Tribe rally? I'm going to lead the rally. Screw those Northerners. And she goes with everything with the assumption that everything bad happening is planned by the Northern Water Tribe, even when there's no evidence. And anyone who says, maybe you should rethink this, is attacked like, well, you're not on my side. She screams at the president of the city. Bad plan. Mako, I get, Mako's gotten really interesting. Like, he's trying to be reasonable. He's like, look, Cora, I have a job to work with the detective force. I can't be there for you all the time. And he said in earlier episodes, like, do you want me to just listen to you or do you want actual advice? And she keeps saying, I want advice. But when he says, like, maybe you should rethink this, she immediately flips out on him. Uh, oh my god. <clears throat> so... Uh, the, the president very quickly says, no, I won't send forces to help the South. So she's like, oh, I'll go to see General Iroh. So like, we get to see Bosco again. Um, very, very briefly, she, he shows up and he's like, oh, I could help you. And the president comes in and he's like, you're not planning to help you, are, are her? And he's like, no, sir. <laughs> um, so he does what any soldier would do. Like, if you are directly told, don't do something, what are you going to do if it's not? If it's not immediately unethical, what are you going to do? Uh, and so, of course, Cor uh, Cor finds out that Mako is the one who spilled the beans. 
because Boleyn spilled the beans to him because Boleyn is Boleyn and he's they're apparent they're still sticking him into the lovable idiot role for this season, which is sometimes funny, but it's starting to get a touch overdone. Um, so of course Boleyn spills the beans, and then he tells Cora that he spilled the beans in the most ador- adorable way ever. Cora's like, "No one knew we were gonna try and make the troops." break the law, which is basically what she wanted to do. Like, she's a terrible avatar. Um, she's like, how, how did make, how did, how could anyone find out how the president know, uh, we're the only ones who knew. And Bolin's like, Oh no, I told Mako. <laughs> oh, Bolin. Oh, Bolin. Um, okay. So court basically tries to get the military to, she tries to incite the military to revolution, which is illegal for good reason. Uh, and it doesn't work. Big surprise. So she's like, or no, um, General Iroh says, you should go speak to my grandmother, the Fire Nation. So we're going to see what's been going on with the Fire Nation, I think. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so I'm actually really excited about that. So Kor decides to go off to the Fire Nation uh, completely alone. She flips out at Mako in the middle of the office Again, no sense of maybe I shouldn't yell about this in front of other people. Um, God. So Cora flips out, destroys his desk, and then Mako's like, look, I think we need to break up. And Cora has the gall to run away crying. Like, worse people skills than me, man. I could have seen that coming. Um, Yeah, so Mako's getting more interesting as Cora's getting progressively stupider. Her response is still basically, who can I punch in the face? Or if I if I can't punch someone in the face, who can I yell into submitting to doing what I want? Um, there's an attack that takes place during this, this rally uh, that happens after she goes there. And she immediately, with zero evidence, she, along with everyone else apparently, everyone else assumes it was the Northern Water Tribe, even though Mako... All, sees some people right before it's happening. He's like, no, I, I think it's, I think it's the gangs. I think this has nothing to do with Unalak. Or if it is, it's not as straight up as the Northern Water Tribe did. That he thinks there's something deeper going on. <clears throat> he tries to get to the bottom of it, and of course, Kor's immediate reaction is, oh, you don't think, you, you, you don't think the Northern Water Tribe's behind it? You tried to stop me from breaking the law? You stabbed me in the back. Oh my. <laughs> this was none of these episodes have been bad but it, they're starting to get schizophrenic um there's no clear f- focus with where everything's going there's nothing i can't say that nothing important happened by going back to republic city like a lot of stuff happened very quickly but none of it feels that significant at this point because it was also rushed um, the lack of filler is still really hurting this, uh, is still really hurting the show, in my opinion. Um, and also I found out that uh, apparently this episode had very low ratings on TV, but I've also heard that was probably due to Nickelodeon changing the time slot, being Nickelodeon. Um, anyway, so what else is there to talk about? At the Southern, um, at the Southern Air Temple, uh, we see Tenzin trying to have a moment with his son, Who's getting more and more terrible. And he tries to teach his son to be like him. Like, you're the alpha male. You must tell people who are in charge. So we're, we're getting a little bit of... Um, of more into why Tenzin thinks and acts the way he does. He has this sense of being... Or being the only responsible one. And he has to organize everyone else. And he's trying to raise his... Or he's at least trying to raise his son that way. With frightening results... <laughs> his kid now commands an army of lemurs. <laughs> it's like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, but with lemurs. Um, it's kind of a frightening image of him commanding this army of lemurs. Don't know if that'll go anywhere. That I don't know if this episode's go that bit of the story's going anywhere. So, yeah, again, with the Southern Air Temple thing, a lot of little bits in this episode. Not quite sure where all of it's... Um, going, and then we get to the ending, which I know know some people have been talking about. Um, yeah, so, my guess was off about Eska. I thought that she was going to catch up with them and decide to join them. 
doesn't look like that's the case yet. Uh, she still, she and her brother are sticking with her dad and are sticking with, we're going to do what her dad tells us to do. We'll see if that'll change. So they attack Cora when she's in a motorboat, uh, heading to Southern Pole. When they destroy the motorboat and Cora just spins water around herself, my girlfriend made a very good point. Like, why is she in a motorboat if she could do that? Good point. So they attack her, but then uh, a spirit comes. They see the, the, the siblings see the spirit coming and they flee. Um... And Cora gets attacked by the spirit. It ends with the spirit maybe swallowing her. And the two twins assume she's dead, and they they skate off on pillars of on um, blocks of ice. So that's the ending. Big cliffhanger ending. We don't know where it's going. Um, yeah. So it, it's an interesting ending. I'll be. I'm interested to see where it goes. The show is still good, but honestly, I think this is the worst episode of the season so far. Um, all the other episodes at least had some interesting dynamics going on. A lot of this was just Cora being a douchebag to everyone about everything with no reason for it. She has no evidence the Northern Water Tribe is orchestrating, has orchestrated the attack that she witnessed. She's just like, oh, a terrible attack. It's the Northern Water Tribe. Um, yelling at the person you're supposed... Again, we're seeing... She has no diplomatic skills. She cannot be calm. She cannot be rational when she's worked up. She's not able to be the Avatar. The Avatar has to be completely neutral in these things. The Avatar has to be above the fray. And she's flat out saying, I'm straight up start, start siding with the Southern Water Tribe. Which, we can see that Unalak's crazy. But we also, we've been told that this is a conflict that's been going back for a long time. So... There are there may very well be legitimate grievances that the North have has against the South, but we don't know that it's never delved into. Cora is just like, oh well, the Northern Water Tribe is just evil, so I am going to side with my family and not even attempt to appear to be above the fray, to appear to be neutral. Uh, and Mako makes a very good point. Like I can't spend all my time. Whoa, like light got really bright there. Anyway, uh, Mako makes Mako. Bleh, sorry. Mako makes a very good point. Like, I can't... You're, you're, I think you're making a lot of mistakes. I want to stop you and you were not listening to me. Um, and, of course, Kor doesn't listen to him when he says that. <clears throat> so, well, well, we still have to see where the season goes. We still have nine more episodes. The Beginnings is coming up in a couple weeks. The, the two-part premiere, which look like they're going to delve into the story of the first Avatar... That should be really interesting. Uh, all the visuals for that in the trailers look really good. Um, yeah, we'll just have to see. Um, I'm not liking... I'm liking Cora a lot less this season than I was in the first season. She's not learning anything. Um, not much more I can say about that. It, it was an alright episode. It, was very it felt very disjointed. Um... Yeah, so here's hoping that next week sort of makes everything congeal a bit more. Um, so, until then...